Give me a pen, please. You think Biden can bend down like that? I don't think so. I mean, what an accomplishment. Donald Trump picks a pin up off the ground to the satisfaction of impressed rally goers. We usually reserve praise for first steps and using your hands correctly for babies. So on second thought, maybe this makes sense. Work out too well. $1.2 trillion for their fake infrastructure. Sure, power. Now, this is the thing. Who gives a damn whether or not Joe Biden or Donald Trump can pick a pin up off the ground? Who cares that Trump can't pronounce the word infrastructure? What he's not talking about is how he failed to get that infrastructure package passed when he was president. He runs towards character assassination and away from policy that benefits people and the English language. A smaller version, but it's even more bacocked, okay? It's even, it's even worse. So it's really, uh, it's a terrible thing. I guess we can file that under hamburger, covfefe, and delegitimatize. Again, I don't really care that this guy messes up words. I care that he wants to continue to advance his criminal career from the White House. And what he continues to want his loyal supporters to pay attention to is nonsense. But isn't it nice to have a president who doesn't need a teleprompter? This te these teleprompters are just gonzo, folks. They're gonzo. Everything he says gets debunked and proven wildly false. But as long as he's got people willing to ignore just how wrong he consistently is, the reality is whatever he tells them it is. They've been running with that bull teleprompter line in conservative circles since Obama was running for president. And these guys haven't caught on yet that every president uses a damn teleprompter. And that's fine. If they worked as hard at advancing useful legislation that benefits constituents as they do to capture the brains of their followers, the country would be the utopia that they keep claiming it is, which they oddly only claim when they're in office. There are fewer examples of what he's done to represent and make people's lives better, and more of him being their savior. It eliminates their expectations of results. The end game is him winning, not him doing anything for them. We also have to run our country. It's nice to be nice. It's nice to be good. We got to run our country. Our country's in trouble. Our country might not survive. I'll tell you what, if we don't win this election, I don't think our country's going to survive. I will say it. And I've never said that publicly, I don't think. You won't be surprised to hear that he has said that. Because if we don't win on November 5th, I think our country is going to cease to exist. It could be the last election we ever have. I actually mean that. We don't win. I think this could be the last election we ever have. That's where our country's going. They cheat on the elections. They don't need votes. They cheat on the elections. I mean, you look at 43,000 votes were found last night. They cheat on elections. When you cheat on elections, you don't have to destroy the country. They're destroying our country. Our country will not survive this. Our country will not survive. Your survival is based on him getting elected to then be a dictator for a day provide aid and comfort to Vladimir Putin, fulfill promises to arrest political enemies, and increase executive power to unprecedented levels where he's immune from prosecution for murder. And since he's got their brains, when he says anything, the people convinced that their survival is based on his self-serving campaign just regurgitate it. I was saying before that I really believe that this administration is totally desecrated, cremated in our nation, and it's in ashes right now. With all the stuff going on at the universities and everything else that's going on with prices and corruption and everything Across else. the board. Across the board. Yes. Mind you, Jimmy Carter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, and, and the sad thing is what, what this nation needs are two things, really. God. Well, you weren't old and enough to vote with Jimmy Trump. Carter. We need two things to fix the desecration and cremation of America. God and Trump, she says. Once you got a group of people that equate you with God, who cares that you spot fascist goals on the campaign trail? Who cares that there's overwhelming evidence presented of the crimes you've committed across the country? All that matters is that you've been told to go over the top and say that Biden has desecrated and cremated the country while their deity has them literally booing the process of trying him for his crimes. It's upside down world. But then something happened that was really uh, horrible. I got indicted. I'm a president of the United States. And I got indicted. Now think of it, for nothing. In fact, if you read Andrew McCarthy, Jonathan Turley, 
uh, the great Mark Levin. You read uh, Greg Jarrett today. He did an incredible piece. You read any of these uh, Alan Dershowitz. They all said, and these are not fans of mine necessarily. They're not. They all said, there's no crime. He didn't do anything wrong. I've never seen anything. You know, usually you say, well, what do you think about this? That There's no crime. Now, I have a crooked judge. He's a totally conflicted judge. And I come, you know, it's, 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 unfortunately, it's a 95 percent or so Democrat area. Other than that, things are wonderful. <laughs> but it's about a 95 percent Democrat area. Suddenly, the justice system and jury process is flawed, something he couldn't have given a damn about when he was advocating for the false imprisonment and execution of the exonerated five, which to this day, he refuses to admit he was shamefully wrong about all while his defense is based on fully debunked lies. Once I got indicted the first time, I got indicted four times, think of it, four times for nothing. J they say J6, J6, Nancy Pelosi didn't call in the police. I said, I will send you 10,000 soldiers. She didn't want them. And the mayor of Washington in writing didn't want them. And by the way, the hoax committee that they set up, I call it the unselect committee. It's an uns I always like that term, the unselect. But the unselect committee damaged and threw out all of the evidence. Did you know that? And nobody does anything. Nobody does anything. If a Republican did that, they'd get the electric chair. They, they destroyed the evidence. They deleted everything. So now all of those people that said, yeah, Trump was, wanted to give 10,000, like the head of the police department, the head of the military, it's all been damaged, deleted, and destroyed. Now think of that. And you don't even read about that story. They destroyed it. The chairman of the committee, this real lowlife, we have to go after Donald Trump. He destroyed all the evidence. He actually destroyed it and deleted everything. If you're in a regular civil court case and if you get rid of stuff, they take very serious umbrage of that. You go to jail for things like that. The Washington Post has debunked this lie multiple times with evidence in direct accounts from the people involved. But when you've got MAGA thinking that you're Jesus, and that any reporting that doesn't match up with your random lies is fake news, you just keep telling them over and over again. It's a self-approved argument. Tell people enough lies for long enough, and they believe it with their entire soul. Then submit your lies by mentioning that the people you fooled support you and your lies, disregarding the evidence that actually proves you wrong. The actual flex here is that you've successfully convinced this many people to live in Trump's false reality even though the truth is right in front of them. Increasingly, people are onto it, Adam. The yeah. people understand what's happening to Donald Trump, and the people understand why this is so political, and it is, in fact, election interference. And the numbers bear that out. If you look at the most recent polls in the seven swing states, Trump leads by anywhere from 1% to 7%. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I think you're absolutely right, Maria. Yeah. The American people have started to figure this out it's not fair and we don't like things that aren't fair but they want they want him convicted before the election oh, that's yeah. what they want